Welcome back to CFB Nation. This is episode six of CFB Prime. I am your host, Nino Brown. Something happened to me today. Not really sure what or how, but you know something that just happens when you say, it's time. It's time to stop holding back. It's time to start going for the jugular. Putting your foot on the throat of the competition. It's time to put this game of college football in a chokehold and not let it breathe again. There's moments that test us as people and how we respond to these tests define the character of us as men, as women. Today, right now, this is a moment in CFB Nation when we will look back and say, yep, this is when they said, no more. This is when they said, no more being overlooked or looked past. No more being told, ah, I don't know, you guys might not be big enough. You might not be, you know, you're just starting out. Today's that day where CFB Nation takes the glove off and says, not today, mother effer. not today. So join me on this glorious episode of CFB Prime. Where we'll be diving into what the hell happened to Michigan State in the final day of the portal. Is it a mass exodus or a mass execution in Colorado? And as Dylan Raiola locked in his destination, and ready to cook. All these questions and more on CFB Prime. Let's go. You know, the portal can be crazy, can be wild. There's ups, there's downs. There's some unexpected people that pop in. But when you think you got everything locked in and you play a spring game and you think after that spring game you have your QB1 and your wide receiver 1, and then all of a sudden... A whirlwind happens. And for Michigan State, quarterback Peyton Thorne said, I'm going to go into the portal. 6'2", 210, you know, almost 3,000 yards last year, 2679. He had 19 touchdowns, 11 picks. Uh, he said, I'm out. And he left the quarterbacks on the roster. is kind of been a suspect spot, right? Noah Kim, redshirt sophomore, 6'2", 180. He didn't look bad in the spring game. He had three or four impressive throws. I'll give him that. Obviously, he had to throw that had that you know college football going wild over Antonio Gates Jr.'s relevancy, 35 yard, yard touchdown pass to Antonio Gates. He's a three star recruit from Westfield High School, but he is that pro style QB. No one can. So as of right now, he gets the guy, or is it Katin Katen Hoser, freshman, 6'2", 205 pounds. He only took five snaps on the spring game. That to me is a red flag. He is a four-star recruit from St. John Bosco, right? He did play the Elite 11s. He's got pedigree. His grandfather was a two-time all-whack offensive guard and AP All-American on mention at Arizona State. So there's pedigree there. He's going to be taking more than five snaps going forward at practices, that's for sure, unless they attack the portal. But to just leave, what's going on in Michigan State? To just take off after that spring game and not just take off by yourself, you went to the portal with the wide receiver one after Jaden Reed has gone to the NFL, just been selected to Green Bay Packers. Keon Coleman says, I'm out too. 6'4", 210. In 12 games last year, he had 58 receptions, 800 yards, seven touchdowns. It's close to 14 yards per catch. Wolverine fans, I'm sorry I'm going to bring it up. I have to. But against Michigan last year, he had five receptions for a buck 55 in that tutty. That hurts. That's gone. So what's left over in Spartans wide receiver room? We spoke by Antonio Gage Jr. He's a freshman, four-star, right? 6'1", 185. He had that 35-yard touchdown that set Twitter on fire. Now, can, can you continue that? Maybe, maybe not. He showed a little bit of a little bit of swag and juice. He had a nice goal route in the spring game as well. He's a bigger body receiver, right? He's thick. He's physically strong. He uses his size and physicality. That body receiver is 50-50 ball. So he showed a little bit of that in the game, especially on the touchdown. Uses his body of separation, and he can run routes. Let's see what happens when he's the guy, or is he not going to be the guy? Is it going to be Trey Mosley, redshirt senior, right? Three-star, 6'2", 198. He's a local guy, Pontiac, Michigan. He's got 98 career receptions for 1,100 yards. He averages around 10 yards per catch. He, he, he's, he's not bad, but is he the guy, right? I don't know. Last year, 12 games, 35 receptions, 359 yards, and four touchdowns. Going to have to step it up there. Darrell Henry, freshman, dynamic athlete, six foot, 175. 
another local guy, Roseville, Michigan. He played in 11 games, but primarily on special teams, but he led the team in kick returns. He had 10 returns for 183 yards. He averaged 18, yep, 18.3 yards per return. But we know what they say. You play, you play special teams, you can get drafted. You play special teams, you can get on the field. I would assume the freshman Henry is going to be getting on the field. The senior, Monetary Force. Now, this is a guy I think can eat. He creates good separation. He's 6'185 from Cleveland, Ohio. He only has 90 career receptions for 262 yards and two touchdowns, right? But he had that little swaggy catch for a touchdown against Ohio State last year. Somebody with experience has got to lead the room. You know, Monetary looked good in spring game. So did Christian Fitzpatrick, registered junior, 6'4, 218, right? Another local boy, Southfield, Michigan. He transferred from Louisville in 2021 during the Smart program. Played in the first five games of the season, but then he got hurt. Well, he's healthy now, so let's see what he can do. You know, you, the guy you would want, he's gone. Bernardi Jeremy, he left for the portal. But there's guys in the portal that can pop. God forbid that they are able to bring in Zachary Franklin out of UTSA, right? And this guy's just close to 3,000 yards in two years, almost 40 touchdowns. This dude just scores touchdowns, gets open, breaks people. And then today... Caleb Brown, three-star uh, recruit from Ohio State, wide receiver, he hits the portal. There's two gentlemen from Purdue who hit the portal, Colin Sullivan and Milton Wright, who didn't play last year, who was, you know, a three-star recruit. He was ineligible in 22 to academics, but he's back. Jerry Short from West Texas, he's entered the portal. And Cody Epps from BYU was a three-star, is another slick one to enter the portal. So what happens? What do they do? We'll South C. They're going to need a QB. They need to do something, whether it be depth or not. Could they go after Casey Thompson? Is that the route that they want to go? We'll see. This guy's out there. Michigan Spons, they have something to figure out. They're left with no backup plan right now. I don't think they were expecting these guys to just take off. We're going to have to see if they can find some gems in the portal. Now let's go to the other side of the country. Let's go to Colorado. Is it a mass exodus? Or are the reinforcements coming in? Is it a mass execution? Or does Prime have a game plan? You know, he's been quoted to say, we're going to try to make you quit, and then we're going to, going to move on, right? He's been also been quoted, when we release the list of guys that we already got coming in, everybody will understand my game plan. He's lost some guys. In this half of the portal, you know, 50-plus, the eyes are popping because we were ripping into Jimbo last year at Texas A&M when they lost 20-something. So he's done doubled it plus more. And Prime's my guy, but that's a lot of guys. So dude, Treyor, tight end, who came in from Arkansas State, he's out. He's probably the biggest tight end in the portal, the biggest name, the best talent. They only have three guys left with scholarships left on their roster. Caleb Foria, Eric Olson, and Louis Pezzolaro. So what are they going to do there? They're going to need to do something. Yusuf McGribble, interior defensive lineman, four-star, he's out. Devin Grant. Defensive lineman, three-star, 36 tackles total. He's out. You know, freshman last year, uh, Jordan Tyson, he's a four-star wide receiver. He, yeah, he was started off well, 407 yards and 22 receptions, you know, but then he got hurt and he was down. Montana Lemonis Craig, who went off in the spring game, right? 150-plus yards in that touchdown. He has 23 catches and 359 yards career total. You had a day and you bounced, four-star wide receiver. So they're out. I know it all looks gross, and there's a list of more guys. But instantly, he brings more guys in. Jacquez Robinson, four-star DB, Alabama, SEC caliber, dog. Chase Wallace, three-star defensive line of Old Dominion, 20 tackles, nine soul, half sack, two tackles lost in 10 games for Old Dominion last year. Brendan Grant, Gant, three-star safety from Florida State, 33 tackles, 19 soul. One and a half tackles for us, a sack, a pass defense, and a fumble recovery last year for Florida State. Brings in a local guy he's familiar with, Willie Gaines, three-star wide receiver from Jackson State. One guy that I'm familiar with, Vito Tisdale, three-star of safety from Kentucky, right? 39 tackles, 22 soul, two tackles for us, one and a half sacks, and a pass defense at the time of Kentucky. Just the other day, they just brought in Derek uh, McLennan the second, three-star edge. From Florida State, you see the Florida State guys are just coming. The Seminoles are coming. Dion is bringing them in. 37 tackles, 17 solo, 5 tackles lost, 3 sacks, and a fumble recovery. 
Amari McNeil, three-star defensive lineman from Tennessee. Another guy, SEC pedigree. He's 6'4", 285 pounds. Just today, Javaris Dawson, four-star wide receiver from the 21 class, transferred from Auburn, right? Oh, it's not just him. I'm going to bring my homeboy, my high school teammate, Marion Cooper, DB from Florida State, four-star. They both went to high school with Dawson, right? He's six foot, 188 pounds. So this kid is a dog. They're just bringing in, and it's still early. The portal just closed. The commitments are coming. Let's see what happens. Dan's got a plan, okay? Oh, who's he going to throw the ball to? Who are they going to throw? Who should throw? Sanders going to throw the ball? Jimmy Horn Jr. If you don't know, go find out, right? Travis Hunter, Tavarius Dawson, and there's rumors the more. The, the, the gentleman from Nebraska, the running back who just entered, uh, Ajay, he already wants to come to Colorado. The talent wants to come. When he first opened up, he says, I'm bringing my Louis bag. You ain't got the Louis bag. You got to go. I don't think people understood he was being real. What you see is what you get. Prime time is prime time. There's no sugar coat and nothing. Those guys stood. All right, we're going to let them run through camp. Well, it didn't work. Got to go. Now I'm going to bring my guys in. Will it work year one? Yeah, he's building, you know, a foundation. We'll see what happens. But it'll be interesting. Get your popcorn ready because it's going to be a movie. Speaking of a movie, let's move on to the next chapter in this movie, CFB Prime. Third, third chapter is Dylan Raiola. Has he made a decision or not? Is he is he overall consensus QB1? And has he proven that? I think he's making strides to solidify himself above and beyond that he's QB1. In the beginning, there were some questions of, a, you know, some of the throws, some of the talent he had. But he was young. I think he's building into his frame, right? Getting bigger. He's training harder. He's training differently. He just went down to Texas. His sister was uh, in a volleyball tournament for a TCU. He was down there training with, you know, Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs QB Patrick Mahomes. You know, picking you're picking the brain of an NFL MVP. Right, Super Bowl winning caliber QB. You can only get better. You can't get worse. His dad was a center for Matt Stafford, and they have a good, you know, connection. So this communication he's had from with Matt Stafford, another guy in the NFL, things are getting better. Just recently, film that I've seen, he's got, you know, the flick of the wrist. He's throwing the ball, you know, forty yards, fifty yards downfield, flat footed, like you know, like you're seeing Travis do and Will Levis did. You know, he's more mobile, he's more more in shape, leaner. Right, he just had a visit today from uh, Georgia OC Mike Bobo. I mean, Georgia, it's down in Georgia, Nebraska. If you look anywhere else, the, the crystal ball, if you look into the crystal ball, it'll tell you that. You know, he just had the elite 11s, right? He was a quarterback MVP. Um, can easily the nation's number one, hands down, the top quarterback at, at the um, elite 11 uh, Eugene Regional Final. He's 6'3 now, 220. So, like I said, he's growing into his body. He's getting bigger, but he's also staying lean. Uh, he was the lone cute quarterback to earn the 11 finals invitation on Sunday, right? It's down to Georgia, Nebraska. I guess if you want to throw USC in there, you, you can. And I don't know if they're even a contender. Lincoln Riley can always slip in the back door. He's been known to do that before. He canceled this visit to Oregon, so they're out. So, yeah, I think he solidified his number one QB, you know, stature and i think he's pulled away i think he's taking the right steps i think you're seeing a little bit of maturity you know i know i know he's still a young kid but he's maturing more and more uh, elite 11s is a stamp that you want when will he make a decision is it georgia is it nebraska does he want to go in the stetson bennett light does he want to carve his own lane in nebraska when was the last time they had a dynamic qb jeff sims could be that dude this year but I'm talking five-star elite. It's been a long time. We'll see what happens. This was a wonderful episode of CFB Prime. I appreciate you, everybody, watching and tuning in. Remember, this is a day we'll go down in CFB Nation history where we turned the table, where we said, mm -mm, no more, not today.